Okay, Job chapter 14. Job is still speaking. Had enough of it. Man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And what is man? Let's say if you did live to be a hundred years old. What is a hundred years? Compared to a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years. Very short. And full of trouble. Job's like, you know what? What's going on here? Is this normal? Painful? I want to get rid of it. So that's the basic very point. You know? My life is short and there are trouble. He's going to look at how short life is in comparison. He, man, cometh forth like a flower. Beautiful, great, lovely, smells. Is cut down. Well, cut down is death. Flowers don't live very long after they've been cut. And he doesn't say they've been put into a vase of water. Is it? You cut a flower and by evening, that flower is dead already. He fleeth also as a shadow. How quick does a shadow go? And continues not. Death. Now we're going to look at death in this chapter 14. And we're going to look at a point of view of what the Old Testament person saw. The Old Testament point of view is not the point of view today. To the Old Testament man before the law and during the law, there will be one general resurrection in the end. That's Revelation 20. And the books were open. If their name was found in the Lamb's Book of Life, they were allowed not to go into the lake of fire. They were allowed to go to the new heavens or the new earth. No one before the law, no one during the law was promised heaven like the church age. They were not promised to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. We learn later on through Jesus in Luke 15 that there's a place called Abraham's bosom. And I don't know if the people around Job's time, I don't know if they died and went to Abraham's bosom. First of all, Job is not a Jew. And those that were disobedient, Gentile or Jewish, they went to hell. They knew about hell. Where Job went when he died, being a Gentile, right with God, I don't know. I don't have those answers. Where, Even though he mentions heaven and hell? He mentioned, they don't really have the concept. They had the concept of hell, but they haven't... They, and for the Old Testament, heaven is where God lives. And the angels. But they don't have to... Because even when Jesus said they went to Abraham's bosom, that's not heaven. That's paradise. And so I can't tell you where somebody like Job or Naaman, the Syrian man that had the leprosy that obeyed God, I think he was right. The Pharaoh that knew Joseph, I believe he was right. And in Abraham's bosom, Lazarus, he says, you know, Father Abraham. So I, I don't know. But one thing Job knows, death is quick. It's sure. We'll see some verses then. And dost thou open thy eyes upon such a one, and bringest me into judgment with thee? So, I'm being judged. I'm being judged by God. I'm being judged by these three men. God is the righteous. Who can bring a clean thing out of unclean? Not one. What about the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to cleanse us, uh, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's on the other side of Calvary. That's not in Job's time. Remember, Job is offering a priestly sacrifice as a husband, as a father, and for himself. He doesn't have no tabernacle. He doesn't have no holy place. And it would be approved by God. And Paul speaks about those times of the Gentiles God winked at. There will be Gentiles in Job's time. I don't know where they go. They will be in the Lamb's Book of Life. I believe the Gentiles go to the new, new heavens. The Jews get the new earth. And the Christians get new Jerusalem. 
And we'll be able to go anywhere and everywhere during that time. But for Job, you can't bring it clean. And even during the law, when they offered the sacrifices and they did what they were supposed to, and they did according to the law, they went to Abraham's bosom. They didn't go to heaven. Because the redeeming blood and the purchase has not been done by Jesus. And only after the death of Jesus that the graves open up and many of the Old Testament saints, many, not all of them. So we're looking at as far as death and hell and, and heaven and all that, hell is sure to them. Heaven's not so sure. Seeing his days are determined, again, a set number of days. The number of his months are with thee, God. God knows when we're going to die. You know, Jesus Christ knew the day that he was born as a baby. He knew what day he was going to die, and he knew how he was going to die. He knew from the foundation of the world, even before the earth was made, he knew. And John, he keeps on saying the expression, my time has not come. My hour has not come. We don't know that. Thou has appointed his bound, bounds that he cannot pass. Well, there's a there's a couple of men in the Bible that God said, okay, one king, he said, he said, prepare thy house, you're going to die. He went under his bed, he repented, he cried, he sought God, and he told Isaiah, turn around, go back, and said, I'll add 15 years. Now, there are things that are set that God, I believe we have a set date. But I also believe that God can add to that date. He already did. 15 years for one king. I believe also he could take away. And we can take away. When we get involved with things with alcohol, we get illegal drugs and tobacco and loose living and sexual pleasures and living in sin, we will get things that will in our body will cause us to die early. And we die early by our sin before God's time. And we will be held accountable. Uh, we'll be held accountable if we kill ourselves earlier than what God wanted. That sounds kind of weird, but we can do it. See, his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, God. Thou, God, has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. Turn from him that he may rest till he shall accomplish. And hiring, that's someone who's paid. That's an employee. It's a Bible word for, for an employee. His day. So may we get what everything we're supposed to be doing while we're here. An employee has a job to do. May we do that job before God and do that job before others. For there is, okay, now verse 7, 8, and 9. He's going to look at a tree that has died. And he speaks a little offhand, but he speaks about a resurrection. But he's not even talking about a resurrection. The main theme has been so far, life is quick. So we're going to liken a tree. And men are likened to trees in the Bible. One blind guy, Jesus says, what do you see? I see men as trees walking. There's a parable in the Bible that says that, you know, you're like a palm tree. And you're the bramble and the beast came along. Men are like in the trees. For there is a hope of a tree. We have hope. If it be cut down, dead. Cut the tree down, what's going to happen? It's going to die. Then it will sprout again. It's dead. In Thessalonians, when it talks about the rapture, we ought not to cry like others having no hope. And you run this reference over there in Thessalonians with the rapture. Now we cry because we'll miss the loved one if they're saved. If I'm saved and the loved one is saved, I'm going to miss them. I cry. I'm upset because they're gone. But I'm going to see them again in the clouds. They got a hope. Jesus, I got a hope. Jesus, blessed hope. The coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So match that with Thessalonians, with the rapture. It will spout again, life. It's a dead tree. How is it going to spout again? And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. 
Here's something that's died, but there's still life in it. Though the root, <coughs> excuse me, wax old in the earth. Wax means grow more and more and more. It gets older and older and older. You know how long Adam and Eve has been in that grave? You know, Abel's been in the grave longer than Adam and Eve. But Abel's coming up. Abel will be judged for his works and he'll be found righteous with his name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Though he's not a Jew and he's not a Gentile and though he's not under the law. Abel's coming up. And the stock, the tree, thereof die in the ground. There's death. It's dead. The tree is dead. But there's still life in that tree. Seven is dead. When I die, if, if, if I go before the rapture happens, if I die, I'm going to be dead. The body's dead, but there's still life. Why? I'm with the Lord. My soul has gone to the Lord. There's life. I'm living. I'm not going. The body's there. You're going to put it in the ground. But me, I'm in glory. You got an unsaved man. He's dead. There's his body. His body's dead. He's still living. He's in hell burning. So Job is out there saying, this is man. Though he's dead in the ground, there's still life whether you go for today, go to heaven, or you go to hell. In Abraham's bosom, the Bible says, uh, uh, Samuel told uh, Saul, I was resting. Why did you disturb me? Jesus said, when talking about uh, Moses in a burning book, he says, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. I am the God of the living, not the dead. You may close this physical body, eyes closed, heart stopped, no more breathing, take all the guts out, whatever you do, for embalming, whatever you do for, for a ceremony of the dead. You're still living. And I'm going to tell you, there's something freaky. Every single funeral I've been, and I've gone up, walked up to that body. I can swear that body is moving. That's freaky. I don't know what that is. I don't know why I said that. But it's dead. Yet, through the scent of water, Jesus says, I'm the living water. Job is speaking more than what he knows that we don't find out later until we get to the New Testament. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has everlasting life. J Job don't know this. It will bud. That's the first time bud shows up. And you thought it was a beer. We're going to be that little bud again. And a bud brings forth a branch or you could bring a flower. Where a tree has flowers, it still has that bud. And bring it forth boughs like a plant. Hopefully you got fruit. And we are likened to trees, Psalms chapter 1. The righteous like a tree planted by the water, by the river. Verse 10. But man dieth. So did the tree. You see, Job is he's complicated. He believes what he doesn't believe. He's not sure what he believes. Because he has no written Bible. Right now, where we are in Job, only by stories do they know about the Sabbath. God rested on the seventh day. The Sabbath is not written down until Moses goes in the mountain and writes down, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt keep the Sabbath. And then he explains it. That's the only time it's written down. And then when God tells Moses, okay, all right, write down Genesis chapter 1. He made the whales, he made the grass, he made, and on the seventh day I rested. I call that the day of rest, the Sabbath. That's the only time it's known. Job is getting what he gets for the Bible. He's getting through tradition, he's getting through oral, he's getting through people who pass on the story. He has no written copy. Job is the first written copy of the Bible is ever to be recorded. But man dieth and wastes away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, see that death. 
Where is he? What were you to ask? And I'm, I'm going to pick on the Baptists only. What if you go to any Baptist church and say, okay, read that verse to him. Where is he? What kind of answer do you think they would get? Including Bible Baptist churches. What do you think they would give you for an answer? I'll tell you where you get for an answer. If you're saved, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If you're lost, you're going to hell. And when you ask people, and this wasn't a standard question when you went to say, if you were to die today, do you know where you would go? No. I think I'd go to heaven. The Bible says, these things I've written unto you that you may know. That's way back over in 1 John, eh? In Job. Yeah, man gives up the ghost. He's dead. Where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, they go away, they go bye-bye, decay. The flood decay, decayeth, that's the first time that word up, shows up, and dryeth, that's the first time that shows up, dries up. There's a body of water. It evaporates, it goes away, and nothing feeds it anymore. Man! You don't feed man, you don't give him liquid, he's going to dehydrate, he's going to die. So man lieth down, dead, and rises not. No resurrection. Till, okay, here we go. Till the heavens be no more. Write down somewhere where you, where you got that. Write down Revelation 20. Because Revelation 20 says the heaven and earth fled from the presence of, the, of God on the great white throne. How did Job know that? And I'm going, I'm going to look just for the date. I'm not going to run to the rep. But I'm going to, it says 96 AD. So you're taking 1600 years before the book of Revelation is written. Job says that there's coming a time, there'll be no more heaven and no more earth and man's coming up. Revelation 20. That's that one, and you'll find it in Daniel, that is that one general resurrection but that's not for the church age. Yes, one general resurrection, and you find it in Daniel, is in the Bible. It's a Bible fact, but it's not for the church age. Those who are before the law, those who are during the law, Jew or Gentile, during the, the, the times of Jesus' life on this earth, will show up in the great white throne judgment, and that does not mean they're all going to hell. If their name, Revelation 20 says, if their name is in the Lamb's Book of Life, they don't go. Job will be one of the names in the book, he don't go. Abel will be one of the names. To the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Job says the body sleeping. Exactly what uh, Thessalonians said about the rapture. Those that sleep. But let's look at chapter 19, verse 26. Let's see where Job stands. 19, 26. Job is not saying there's no resurrection, resurrection at all. Job 19, 26. Now watch the death. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, you get maggots and bugs, Yet in my flesh, I thought you said you're going to be eaten. Shall I see God? And that's that Revelation chapter 20 when the dead are given up. Job can't be saved looking through Calvary. He doesn't even know what Calvary is. So Job believes in a resurrection, but that one general resurrection in Revelation 20. That is perfectly proper to believe in one general resurrection, but there's a resurrection of the church. At the rapture. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Now what's going on here? 
Job wants to be relieved of his pain and sorrow. And right now, the only relief he can see now is if I would just go and die. And he may be now, he may not be looking for death, but he's looking for a cure. And right now, the only cure he can see is if I die. What's Job telling us? When you die, there's no more pain, no more sorrow, unless you go to hell. But Job is right in the Lord. We know that, Job 1 and 2. As far as Job is saying, listen, I'm right with the Lord. I've got problems. He's chastising me. I'm a sinner. But if I were to die, everything would be well. He's got that faith. That thou, God, would keep me secret. What's the secret? Wherever I go. Sure, not the body, because they'll they, they can go visit the graveyard where they'll bury Job. <laughs> After that, I don't know where you put me, Lord. Until the heavens go away and the earth goes away, we all show up in that journal. Until thy wrath be passed. Now he's looking at God's doing this. God is angry with me. That thou, God, wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. And he's looking for comfort from his misery. Lord God, put me in the grave until you're not mad at me no longer. That's what he's saying. And if Job's talking about the resurrection... He is facing the fact is, when I stand before God, I will see God, and He won't be angry with me no more. But while I'm living and sinning, He's angry with me. And so He says the hope, He's got the hope in the resurrection that when He stands before God. Right now, things are looking miserable. If a man die, Shall he live again? There's that question. All the days of my of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. And they will be changed as we will be changed. What will their change be? We will be like Christ. What will the Gentile and the Jew be like in the eternal life? I don't know, but Job said there's a change. Listen, when Job, let's look at Job alone, what Job knows. Job is not going to be, and I just forgot what I was going to say, uh, a zombie. He's not going to go in eternal life, walk around, rain, rain. He's not going to walk around with his body decaying. He's telling us he's going to get a brand new body somehow, in some way. To God changes me. I don't know, and I, like I said, for the Christian, we're going to look like Christ. I don't know about before the law, and I don't know about the Hebrews in the law. But Job tells us there's a change coming for them. There's a lot I don't know. I'm not afraid to say I, I don't know. But the Bible, Paul says for us, in a moment in the twinkling eye, we all shall be changed. I mean, you're not going to see your great-great-grandmother as she was in, in the grave. She said. She's going to get the new body. Thou shalt. God shalt. Call. And I will answer thee. Isn't that almost like our rapture? The trump shall blow. And we shall. The dead in Christ shall rise. Now remember. We were not in the church. Yet, but look at that. This calling of Job. In Revelation 20. Could be. Job, step up to the throne. Okay. All right, open the books. Let's see how well Job is doing. The first man that talks about that resurrection has a book named for him. And we know, we don't know everything about him, but we will one day.
And notice too, when we open up the book of Job, which will be open at Revelation 20, we also have right now three people. Three people will be judged with Job for their actions. Time has stopped. Revelation 19, time has stopped. Oh, okay, Job, you met with uh, Eliphaz. Eliphaz, you want to step up to the plate? Let's see how well you've done. And according to Job and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit at the great white throne judgment, you take a lost member. The name's going to be called. Or at least a saved member, Job saved. The lost Say rich man in, Re in, in Luke chapter 15 had no name. You get no name. Again, I don't know how God's going to call a lost man if he has no name. Or maybe they'll be standing in line. They come up next and God sees someone who's in the book of life. <laughs> okay, Job, step up here. After doing a thousand people have no names. Job, come in. Maybe get 500 people. I don't, I'm speculating here. 500 people. David, come on up. Maybe three people. Esther. I don't know. I do know a lost man has no name. I do know that saved men have names. After all, Elijah and Moses were dead. And Peter says, can we build a tabernacle for you, Lord? Can we build a tabernacle for for Moses and for Elijah. I am in a realm right here. I don't know. And a lot of this is speculation. And I can be wrong. If a man dies, shall he live again? Yes. John said, much, 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 much later than Job. If a man has the son, has everlasting life. Job don't know that. And that was written before the Calvary. Because John the Baptist will die before Jesus dies. But remember, Jesus came preaching hell and preaching the kingdom. When man dies, shall he live again all the days of my appointed time that I've been here? Will I wait? All my days of my appointed time, everything I've done, I wait. Till my change come. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou will have a desire to the work. Uh, we got to go to Revelation 20 now. We've got to go over there. We can't. We cannot pass up Revelation 20. The work. Stop right there. And I'm going to read Revelation 20 verse 11. I'm going to read it on the account of Job alone. No one else, just Job. I believe Job is going to be in heaven. I don't know what. I don't know what's he going to look like. But I know he won't have those mark, those scars of those boils anymore. I saw a great white throne and him, Jesus, that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heavens fled away. That's what Job said. And there was found no place for them. Goodbye, Mother Earth. You're not going to save her. I saw the dead. That's what Job has been talking about. Small and great. Stand before God. That's what Job said. Yet in my flesh, when these worms eat this body, I will stand before God. And the books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Plural. According, there it is, according to their works. That's what Job just, we left Job off saying. The sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Job. And death and hell was cast in the lake of fire. It's empty. It's been cast. This is the second death. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And if you are found in the book of life, you don't go into the lake of fire. Job, let's look at your works. Verse 15. Thou will have a desire to work of thy hand. Job, your works match. 
Your name's in the book. Come on. Let's go. On this side. I don't know how many people are going to be cast off in a lake of fire that burned forever before Job shows up. All right, you come over here, Job. You know, I can't be like Job. I can't let my works are not going to save my soul. My work upon Jesus Christ. That shows up at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's between the rapture and between the tribulation, if not during the tribulation. Have, our judgment, judgment seat of Christ is from the rapture until Revelation 19 when we mount up and come back to second advent. For now, verse 16, thou numberest my steps. You mean you mark everything I do. The books were open. Does thou not watch over my sin? Yeah, yes, he does. And the sins are recorded. But how would Job get rid of his sins? He's not under the law and he's not under grace in the church age. Job chapter 1. Something that God has allowed for them and not us. Job chapter 1 verse 5. And it was so. In the days of their feasting were going about. That Job sent and sanctified them. Set them apart. Rose up early in the morning. And offered burnt offerings. No sin offerings. Burnt offerings. According to the number of them all. For Job said it might be that they had, my sons had sinned. And curse God in their hearts. Thus Job did continually. He offered burnt offering. But there's no sin offering. Where would Job get that? Cain brought blood. Job knows that much. When Noah got out of the ark. He offered animals. Not water. <laughs> Noah could not have been settled with God by going to join a church. There was no church. Job has learned from his ancestors, God wants blood. That's how it's done. Now what Job did in chapter 1, were his sons made right? Was his daughters made right? You ready? I don't know. Because when you get to the law, who did the sacrificing? It was the priest. And yet the people brought the offering, and the people killed their own offering at, at the brazen altar. You know what the Old Testament gets you? A lot of, I don't know. You know what I do know today in, in the church? Age? It's all by Jesus. It's all by the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's all by the gospel. I know I'm saved. I know I'm a child of God. I know I'm going to glory. And I know my, my, my blessed hope is Jesus. He's coming whether I die or I'm alive. Could Job have possibly been um, a religious leader? Joke, what do you mean religious leader? Like knowing the stories. Yeah. Passed on, sitting yep. in the gate, yeah. The yeah. Because he knew God wanted a sacrifice. And the thing is, when you, I'm glad you mentioned the city gate, because that's where all the main stories would be. And we know that Job heard from God. I mean, when Job said the gate, he may, okay, hold on, guys, I'll be back. He may went off to God and say, God, I have no idea. And he may come back and say, This is this is the revelation of God. You're guilty, and you need to do this. Now, where else does that come from? Uh, we got to find this one. Uh, Job chapter... Because that's a good question. Because look here. Um, Job chapter 42.7. Now watch this. As far as that offering, as far as Job... The Old Testament, you really don't know. I'm glad I'm in the New Testament. I'm glad I'm under grace because I know. You realize anybody did what David did, they were going, died, and going to hell. But the mercy of God. God told David, whatever Solomon does, he's still my son. You don't lose it. Anybody else done that? Every king of Israel went to hell. I guarantee it. I guarantee that. Job chapter 42, verse 7. And it was so 
that after the Lord has spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz, the Temanite, that's the one of Eden, that's Esau's great-grandson, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. We're reading about them now. For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job had. Remember that as we go through, through the book of Job. What? Yep. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks, seven rams, and go to my servant Job, uh-oh, and offer up yourself a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him who I have set. Least I deal with you after your folly, and that ye have not spoken of me the thing that which is right, like my servant Job. And they bring the offering. Notice there's no sin offering. It's just a burnt offering. So who did God tell the, the Eliphaz? I forget the three men's name. Who did God tell him to get right with? Go to Job. Job was already a priest of his family. Job chapter 1. There, as far as the Bible, there is no priest class unto Exodus 20. I'm not going to be able to find this one. I'm not going to be able to find this one. We got one in there. I know it's in there. I know that. Oh, uh, let me see. Let me do a search here. I love recording. We're getting a good study tonight, so let's get it right. Exodus. Let me show you something here. All right, this Exodus two sixteen is one place. Not the place I want to look at yet, but Exodus two sixteen. Exodus 2.16 Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters. There were priests doing priestly duties. For God and for fallen gods. What about Midian? I, I, don't, I have no idea. But look, there's a priest. Alright, Exodus 19.22 Now the law is given in Exodus 20. Exodus 20 begins the law. And God will speak to Moses. Exodus 19.22 And let the priests also which come near to the Lord. God has not revealed to Moses anything about a priesthood. And there are priests right there. And what did they do? Which come near to the Lord. There are priests before the priesthood is set up and they come to God. The law will say there will be a specific people. These priests will probably be priests of the family like Job. So there were good priests and there were bad priests. Book of Revelation says, I am a priest. I just don't call myself father. I don't wear my shirt on backwards. And I offer a sacrifice. What? Prayer. I come bold before the throne and say, Lord God, my wife, Lord God, my family, my friends, my church, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's what John the Baptist's father was doing when he opens up in the Gospel of Luke. That prayer is the incense. There's so much to be priest in the Bible. So Job 14. There were priests in the Old Testament that did right. And there were priests that did wrong. In the law of God specific one family to be priests. And if you had anybody else who were priests of, of not of, of Abraham, not of Aaron, then you were wrong. It was specific. During Job's time, there's no specificness. 
that's the word. Verse 17, my transgression, look at that. I have sinned, Job said. It's sealed in a bag. I'm carrying around a bunch of sin. It's funny how the Bible says Judas carried the bag and he was a thief. And thou, God, soweth up my iniquity. It didn't say it washed. He just took it and sold it up. Yep. Can't be washed because the blood of Jesus Christ hasn't been shed. The blood of Jesus Christ not only did it redeem the Jewish people under the law and those those Gentiles that did follow the law, but you also got, what about Cain? I mean, not Cain, what about Abel? You know he was righteous before God, but he wasn't redeemed. And surely the mountain falling cometh to naught. I mean, if, I, if a mountain fell down, it wouldn't be no longer a mountain. And the rock is removed out of his place. It won't be there no more. The waters wear the stones. Get nice smooth stones. At one point in time, those, those stones were not smooth. They've been etching away that, that rock material. Thou washes away the things which grow out of dust of the earth. And thou destroyest, that's the first time that word shows up, the hope of man. There are some men who are going to go to hell and that's not what they owe. Not everybody wants to go to hell. They join a religion, they do something, they do work, they do whatever their brain or whatever they've been taught. I can't lose my hope because my hope is settled and steadfast in Jesus alone. Thou prevailest, that's the only time that word shows up, forever against him. The one without the hope. And he passes, he dies. Thou changes, that's the only time that word shows up, his countenance. <laughs> of course it changes your facial expression, you're dead. I knew, I knew a person that died and they told me that they had to put a smile on that person's face. It did not look good on how they died. They could change your face. They could change your expression, not you. You can walk up to a corpse all day and you're not going to make it laugh. All the jokes you tell. And sendeth him away. You know, if you are put away from God, that's hell. The one that lost his hope, God says, okay, get away from me. That's hell. Man, we are going a complete opposite of what Job said. I'm going to stand before God one day. I'm going to be resurrected. I don't know how. I don't know what. But, you know, I'm going to stand before God. Here's the other man. Here's the contra. This man is going to have lost his hope. And God's going to say, I'm going to change your countenance. I'm going to, that's it. You're going. Get away from me. What happens if God sends you away? That prodigal son went away himself, but, but when he came back to the father, oh, there was hugging and kissing and loving. His sons come to honor, and he knoweth it not. You know what the dead man knows? Absolutely nothing. That rich man in hell said, I want my, my brothers to be saved. That's all he knew was going on. But remember, we can't we cannot put this on a doctrinal statement because Job doesn't even know. Job's looking at life like Ecclesiastes. I'm looking at life through my eyeballs. Bible says, and, and again, Luke chapter 15, when the angels rejoice in heaven, when one sinner repents. And you imagine if you got loved ones in heaven today, what's the angels rejoicing about? This person just got saved and they're probably listening. Is it, is it somebody I know? Is it one of my family members? Is it a co-worker? Is it a friend? And there will be some knowledge of those in heaven. In hell? I don't know if they know what happens. 
and he knoweth not. And they are brought low, the sons. But he perceiveth, the only time that word shows up, it not of them. The dead man doesn't have any idea. His sons could become the president of the United States, the king of England, and whoever, were you ever called the, the, the guy in, in, in uh, Russia? Could become the world leaders, could be the head of the United Nations. Dead man, he doesn't know nothing. But his flesh, the one that's died, upon him shall have, that's the first time that word shows up, pain. Now how did Job know that? Isn't that what the rich man said? I'm in torments, I'm in agony, if I could just have a drop of water. And the first time pain shows up in the Bible, it's the book of Job. And Job says it's about a man in hell. You see, they knew more about hell than they knew about heaven. And Job just said the guy's dead. Job can say he doesn't know about his children. He dies. He goes off. God sends him off. He has no precept. But I do know he has pain. And his soul within him shall mourn. Don't you get that kind of atmosphere with the rich man in hell? Why did he get it? I want, I want, I want relief. And Job says, the body goes in the grave, we read about, and the soul goes to hell. As far as the man that's right with God, he goes in the grave, he dies. And there'll be that one resurrection, Old Testament, we will face God. And we will know God. And our works will be judged and will be fine. Perfectly fine. Job has got more of a revelation before John's revelation. And Job has no Bible. And scholars today, you have sinaries, S-I-N. And you got college campuses of the Bible where you, you go to the plants and you confess your sins to the plants. And you go to a college and you got the 12 apostles statues and you go out there and you pray to those statues. Baptists. I ain't picking on the Catholics. I'm picking on the Baptist colleges. And they don't know diddly squat. They don't know nothing. Job knows a lot more than I do. Because some of these, remember I said I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. There you go.